Hey gang, welcome back, big boy. Here we go, here we go. Oh my gosh, we're playing the Heroes of the Pacific. It's kind of cool. All right. Forces started here, moving this way. We're at the end of the second turn, beginning of the third turn. Uh, we had a fire action here where uh, first action, uh, uh, Corporal, is it Corporal? Yeah, I guess it is Corporal. Is that right? CPL? Captain? Is that supposed to be Captain? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Mil, uh, Migliori here, or Miglior, was up here. We moved him first. We used the leader bonus to move, uh, you know, uh, two, four, six to here. So we can block the advance this way and also prepare for the reinforcements that are coming on here for the Japanese. So took a little bit of a risk there, but I wanted to prevent these guys from getting into this heavy cover. Uh, the Japanese receive a plus three bonus to their save die roll uh, for when we do fire combat and the Americans will not receive a plus two. But now that we have a line of fire into this area here where the Japanese reinforcement's gonna come on, We've put ourselves in a reasonably good position. I've got a BAR in here, and I've got this squad's got uh, uh, sort of satchel charge. It's a, uh, I guess it must be this this thing here. I just got that flipped over the wrong way. Uh, it's a MG of some type. And uh, let's see, where were we? So uh, Japanese doing uh, what the best they can do. They uh, these guys have both moved, so they couldn't fire, so they uh, moved in adjacent. And that allowed the Japanese to spot this chappie here. So these guys uh, fired, and the net result was a morale check of only plus one. So everybody passed, but we did indeed, in fact, roll for a hero. And that's one of the cool things about the lock and load system, and those of you that have never played before, uh, I'll explain that real quickly, how that works, but for everyone else, just block your ears because you've heard it a hundred times. But basically what happens with saves is when you roll a one to save, which is the best die roll that you can make uh, for your save, you uh, get to roll again, and if you roll an even number, uh, you get a hero. So we have a uh, hero Schult, and you draw a random uh, skill card, and he received the Slayer skill card, which is awesome. How awesome is it? I'll tell you, I'll read it to you. It's here somewhere. I've got a blocked up nose, sorry. The unit possessing this skill is or contains an expert machine gunner. <coughs> but he doesn't have a machine gun. Uh, this unit can fire more than once per turn when the unit fires, resolve the attack and mark the firing unit with a fired marker and the target attacks with the slayer fired marker. In subsequent enemy impulses during the same ops phase, the unit can op fire at enemy units that move in or adjacent to the hex containing the slayer fire marker. To do so, however, the firing unit must first pass a morale check. If the unit passes the morale check, it fires on the designated hex with the zero five power. And there goes the air conditioner, it's going off now. If the unit fa fails the uh, MC, remove the Slayer fire, fire marker. So that's a pretty powerful deal. Uh, now, that's, it makes an interesting comment here. Uh, yeah, it's an expert machine gunner. So, uh, you, but you can fire when not have a machine gun, I believe because it doesn't specifically say you can't or shouldn't. That should be clarified in the rules there somehow. Not a big deal. <clears throat> so, end of turn two, beginning of turn three, we're gonna roll for initiative. That will be telling because, uh, so it's the end of the turn, we're gonna take all these guys off and uh, kind of have at it. And I'm gonna stop here. So we've got uh, Japanese initiative of five, Americans of four, Japs go first. They are going to get receive these reinforcements. They've got the Warrior Spirit, Sergeant Hero, and uh, a couple of dinky squads there. So they'll be uh, on like Donkey Kong before you can say who's it, what's it. Later.